Alrighty, hey there listeners, how are you all? Uh, today on our show we have Anthony Lowe. Anthony, uh, Anthony is known as the Physio Detective. He is a really well-renowned physio from New South Wales, from the Sydney area. He's, uh, he's built up two successful um, physiotherapy practices in his time. Since, um, since doing that, he sold both of those and moved on to educating others and coaching and, uh, and training with some really, really high-level athletes from around Australia and around the world. He's just gone through the US doing a tour over there, which was super successful. So he's a really brilliant guy. He's got some definitely left of field ideas about training, rehabilitation, warm-ups. So it was a very interesting, uh, interesting conversation that we just had. It was me and Tommy because Mac was, um, Mac pussied out. He's in bed. Uh, nah, he's, uh, I think he's genuinely sick. Probably shouldn't have said that. I feel bad now. But um, nah, so it was me and Tommy. This is a good show. I hope you guys really enjoy it. Uh, before we get into the show, I'm just going to go through our sponsors. So firstly, we're sponsored by Audible. So Audible is an audiobook service, so with a huge range, 180,000 audiobook titles. All you have to do to try Audible for free is go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash ADVF radio. Again, www.audibletrial.com forward slash ADVF radio. That'll give you 30 days free audio um, membership, uh, <laughs> Audible membership. <laughs> I'm doing terribly here. Um, so, 30 days Audible membership and you'll get a free audiobook. So, audiobooks are awesome, guys, because if you're not learning, if you're not reading, if you're not trying to take in more information, you're not really growing. This is what I believe anyway. So, myself personally, I've always got a headphone in. I'm always listening to a good podcast, good audiobook. Um, when I'm in my car, driving from place to place, fuck the radio. I don't listen to any radio. I listen to Spotify if I want to listen to any music or I listen to an audiobook or a podcast. So, check it out, audibletrial.com forward slash ADVF radio. Also, we are looking for two new sponsors to fill in the holes that Lock Sam and NDO Sups um, have left, guys. They've finished their time with us. Um, we're going to give them a free wrap, though, because they helped us out. So, Lock Sam Solutions is a boutique consulting and business support company focused on business consulting and commercial services. To head to their website and find out more, go to www.locksamsolutions.com.au. NDO Sups. Great for recovery, guys. Max swears by their supplements. If you want to check out NDO Sups and get 10% off, head to ndosups.com. And lastly, we are sponsored by, brought to you by AdventureFit Travel. AdventureFit Travel is a mother company, guys. It's a, an adventure travel company for the fitness community. And I'm pleased to announce we've released our Philippines trip. So this is a, a holiday in November for seven days. It's going to be amazing. Just a, a real coastal retreat like the ones we just had in Bali, which we got five-star reviews. Ash Bedford said we changed his life forever. Everybody said it was the greatest experience of their life. So we've got the Philippines coming back. Clock off is back and involved. So Dimitri will be doing a weightlifting seminar over there. That is the 1st of November to the 7th of November. For more details, www.adventurefittravel.com or email info at adventurefittravel.com. That's it, guys. Enjoy the show. Alrighty, so we are sitting here with Anthony Lowe, the physio detective. Uh, before I go into any of Anthony's, uh, any of his bio, we'll just throw it over to Tommy, and Tommy will start us off as usual with Tommy's tribute. Cool. Hey, Anthony. Uh, welcome to the show, mate. Um, for the purposes of the tribute, I've actually called you uh, Tony because Anthony doesn't rhyme with any of the words I've put in the uh, the song. So <laughs> if it's offensive, um, I apologize. <laughs> All right. This is uh, Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. Hey, hey, Tony said it's great to have you on the show. I feel like me and you are bros. Well, hey, hey, man, I can't wait to talk about your sick-ass role as a physio. This tune is so out of <laughs> Well, you said that you like netball, although I think that's cool. It's a bizarre call. <laughs> Interlude. Well, 
Well, hey, hey, Tony. Well, hey, hey, Tony. Well, hey, hey, Tony. We'll be talking to you on the show. Welcome to Adventure Fit Radio. Uh, Thank you you very much. Also, too, for everyone at home, um, thanks, mate. I uh, I completely forgot to tune my fucking guitar. (laughs) That sounds so bad. Good tradesman Uh, doesn't blame his tools, mate. Yeah, that's true. I suck. (laughs) All right. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Cool. So, um... We'll start off before we go into your uh, your physio background stuff. You before the show we um, we discussed a few things, got a little bit of um, bit of your interests out of you, and you're a big Star Wars man. Tell us where that all started. Well, you know, it started when you were a kid. I was a kid anyway, so I was actually alive when the first ones came out. So that would be a bit different Ooh. for the younger generation. Um, but <laughs> saw it on video, you know. Um, we saw, apparently, I remember being in the theater to see Empire Strikes Back. Um, and my sister was, my sister was very young, of course, and she stood up and said, turn it down, turn it down. It was too loud for her. But, um, yeah. Really? So, yeah, she was there. She was, she stood up on her seat and told me to turn it down. (laughs) But, um, yeah. And then Return of the Jedi, I was probably, um. I was probably in year three or year four when Return of the Jedi came out. So I remember that quite clearly and talking about it. And then everything since then, you know, has been... Um, I never got into the fan fiction, I must admit. But, um, you know, just... It's a classic childhood memory for me. So when the... Um, yeah, awesome. When the, the Those That Shall Not Be Named next three came out, especially that... that fourth movie came yeah. out um, <laughs> ah yes yep so what about um, the new one you, you don't you don't like the bad. new one? Oh, the new the new one was brilliant um it was oh yeah you know, for sure it's... 100% i went to the uh, i went to the um the premiere at crown casino oh, I, I was nice. kicking around with stormtroopers and princess layers <laughs> and yoda and yoda, <laughs> yoda. <laughs> he looks good for his age being 400,000 years old <laughs> yeah i went to the i i, um, I got up bright and early with a couple of my uh, couple of lads and went down there it was awesome oh nice nice it so was, the, big, um, the big question is though oh sorry I've nearly nearly cut you off <laughs> we, we got um, we got some feedback from um, from our listeners the other day that we have to stop cutting guests off and I've just started off by cutting you off fuck um, you listeners <laughs> yeah sorry I cut you off there Anthony what were you saying no I was just going to say that it was a great event great movie uh, you know I was, I was happy to see a return to a more traditional type of movie instead of special effects and all that sort of stuff, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll ask you this. Who is Ray's mother and father? Who are Ray's mother and father? Ooh. Ooh. I don't know who's Ray's mother, but I reckon... You don't I know? Reckon, what about the... Go on. Well, there's a theory that she's like Anakin and born of the Force. Right. I, I reckon so the force was her one. mother and father? Uh, not her so, mother. So she's got no so that means no father. Just she's just born into the womb. Okay. That's not a bad yeah. theory. You don't think she's um you don't think she's a Kenobi? Uh I saw that theory. Um no, I don't, because whilst Ben Kenobi is powerful in the force, he's not he's not super powerful in the force, if you know what I mean. So Yeah, absolutely. You know? So she, so, like, I mean, she has no training, and she's flying the Millennium Falcon and beating off two Tie Fighters. Like, that's superpower yeah. force, you know. So yeah, I certainly think that if she's I'm not a Skywalker, if she's not a Skywalker, which I don't think she is, because like I mean, which father in their right mind would leave their daughter behind to fend for herself, right? So I don't think that that's what she is. Yeah. I think she's born of the force. Nah, that's right. All right. Well, if um if her mother or father was a spider, apparently spiders leave their kids really young. So, is that? Yeah. I mean, I've heard of a theory. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, um, Ray's mother is a spider. Can you shed some light on that? <laughs> sure. I I think thank God she got a lot of her father's features. Um, you know, she she does seem to have long limbs, but the two eyes yep. thing and yep. the. The non-venomous <laughs> mouth that she eyes. seems to have is probably in her favour. Yep. 
Um, so okay. you know, okay. yeah, I think the fact, the, the, the the fact that she's not an arachnid probably, <laughs> to probably stay points alive. the fact that. She, she <laughs> So, so you you don't think she's a spider? <laughs> well, right, she could be uh, more of a spider. She's just we'll got a lot of her father's so... features. <laughs> yeah, okay. we okay. could get into an argument here. <laughs> All right, so so Anthony, um, what made you get into physiotherapy? Um, wasn't good enough to be a doctor, to be honest. Uh, you have to do this well. thing at school called study, and I didn't <laughs> study. I, I left Never it a bit it. late. <laughs> I, I left it until six weeks before the HSC before I thought, hey, maybe I should pull my finger out. And, um, right. and so I only got enough marks to get into physio, not medicine. So, um, okay. And to be honest, there was a friend of mine that I'd just met and she was doing physio and she got the marks to do medicine and chose to do physio, which I didn't understand. So I hung with her and she got me through uni, to be honest. So it was pretty awesome. Right. Okay, and where did you do university? Where, where, where was your, um, what's your background? University of Sydney. Yeah, so University of Sydney, yep. you know, I scraped through, P's get degrees, I got a credit average, a high credit average. But um, the thing that I learned yep. was that getting getting your university ticket is is literally just that. It's a ticket to get on the bus to start learning what to do. It, You know, it's just a screening process to make sure that you're sure. safe enough to start experimenting on people to work out what to do with them. Hmm. And when did you come to that realization? Was that pretty early on once you had um, finished your studies or or did you come out of uni thinking that you knew it all and then it took a few years to really realize that there was a lot that you didn't know? Um, yeah, that's a good question, hey. Like, I reckon I came out of uni, I knew my place in the world. I didn't know very much. Um, but... The people around me didn't seem to know very much either. Um, and I say that in retrospect. At the time, obviously, they did know stuff. Um, but mm. a patient a patient asked me a question and they said, why do you do... And it's called a mobilization. You've probably had it if you've had any physio where you lie down and someone pushes into your back repeatedly in a rhythmic fashion. And mm. this patient said, why do you do this? Like, how does it work? And I went you know what, I'm a junior physio, let me go ask the seniors. And so hmm. I went around the department trying to find out why we do this and how does it work and no one could really give me a good answer. And that's when I realized that I needed to, to learn more. That's when I realized that just having the ticket and doing nothing with it is kind of unsatisfying. So I decided from then to, to start exploring what else is out there in continuing education and asked a few people... Um, who gave me some advice and um, and started doing courses? Hey, and uh, I never stopped really. I've spent over a hundred thousand dollars in courses. So, <laughs> well, that's, Jesus, that's great. I think. Yeah. Um, it's, do you want to buy a Ferrari? Or? <laughs> I think, I'd prefer uh, to buy a Ferrari, but <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be the physio I am today without them. Yep. Oh, yep. that's right. It's interesting that you say that. I um, my my girlfriend is a osteopath, and um, she. She came home the other day and was really, uh, really excited. She couldn't wait to tell me that she'd been getting all of her referrals right. She'd, you know, once you kind of diagnose something and then you send it over to a doctor and they come back, obviously there's going to be a percentage of the time that the patient will come back a couple of weeks later and say, oh, look, it actually ended up being this, not what you said. But she's actually um, been nailing all of her, she said it's just been a really good run, nailing all of her diagnoses. And that's, I suppose... I never really thought of it like that. I never really thought of the reward that you get um, for the knowledge that you have mm. or how wrong you can be if you don't go and try and better yourself and spend the money on the education like you're doing right now, I suppose. Yeah, and you know, when I get to that place where I'm nailing everything, I am looking over my shoulder because something big is coming that I'm not seeing. Um, I'm old enough now to know that... Right. I, I'm old enough to know and I know enough to know what I don't know and what I know is minor, is so small in, comp in comparison to what I don't know and um, it's going to come and she's going to have to challenge her beliefs and it's a never, end it sounds very pessimistic but it's a never ending cycle of challenging what you know, what you think is right because we, we only see the people that we get better, right? Because we only see the people that like what we do. Yeah. 
Because they come back. Mm, the people who don't like what we do, they don't mm. come back and they don't tell you. So, you know, there's people out there mm. listening to me thinking that I'm an asshole and that I, I suck at what I do. And, you know, the only thing that I would say to them is, is that you need to tell me that I've not done something or you need to tell me that I've got something wrong because for me, it's not about ego. It's not about the need to be right all the time. It's about the need to do the right thing by the patient. And, you know, I'll, I'll be the first to put my hand up and say that I don't, I don't know everything. And, you know, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, I got it wrong and, you know, I'm only doing the best I can. So it's, it sounds like it's very easy to get complacent um, in what you're just saying, I suppose. You're always getting the pats on the back and, and uh, if the patient comes one time and then they, they really feel like they've got nothing, they're not going to come back. So so how much money per year are you spending, um, w- would you say, and how much time in the year do you spend on your continued education? Oh, it's it's been difficult recently, but I still... I still go on courses. So up until recently, the Australian Physiotherapy Association um, would audit a course. And I think I must be the only auditor in New South Wales because I was auditing stuff here. So I would go on three, say three courses a year. Um, And if I had to pay Mm -hmm. for those courses, you're probably looking at three grand. And I was doing at least three grand a year for 15 years. So... Um, right. that's, that's just on those types of courses that doesn't include my masters that I paid for in after tax dollars. That doesn't include part of that's all a prerequisite, the... right? To, to get your, your continued education points. Is that the, uh, with the physiotherapy? Yeah, absolutely. You have to, absolutely. You have to get a certain amount of points every year to, to keep your license. Yeah, um, but the stupid thing is, is that it's so easy to get a hundred points that it's almost worthless. Like. If we talk for an hour about mm. physiotype stuff, that counts as an hour, and I've only got to do a hundred in three years. Like I do that just teaching right, really? my seminars, right? If I if I go away on right. a weekend and I do sixteen hours worth of talking, and I only have to run my seminar eight times, not less, right? Seven times, and. I only have to do seven weekend seminars where I teach and I've hit 100 hours already. So I don't even bother. Well, I don't even bother with that system because to me, that's that's the bare minimum. That's nowhere near what you need to do to stay on top of things. Like the, the best physios mm. that, that I want to be like are doing something nearly every day. They're reading something every day. They're, they're into it. They're talking about it. They're living it. They're treating it. They're challenging it. They're discussing it sure. it's yeah it's what we do and what are what are some of the characteristics you were talking about before about how um you want you're looking up to sort of um to physios in the industry what are some of the characteristics that um you admire so much about them in terms of what they do ah oh, it's all the stuff that i'm not right so they're yeah. smart they're quick they're 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 more empathetic they're um They've got better think skills you're doing than a I do. Disservice there. You're you're a pretty um, pretty well rounded. I mean, the reason we got you on the show is because you're um you come super highly regarded around the industry. So mm. I'm sure there's definitely got to be some people that are looking the same way at you, wouldn't you say? It's true. People contact me. They want me to mentor them. They want me to help them in the profession, and I do what I can. But. You know, if I if I even start thinking like that, you know, I'm a guy with an ego that's easily, easily grows out of control. So, you know, I've got yep. to cut that stuff off. Um, otherwise, yeah, you, it becomes about me fit. and not about Sorry. the patient, you know, like it's, it, it's to be a good physio. It is not about me. It is about the patient. It's not about how good I am. It's about how good can I help that person. So, um so that's the thing that, that, that I really work towards. And, you know, I suck at physiology. I'm going to tell you now. I suck at physiology. Mm-hmm. Don't talk to me about energy systems. I know there's three of them. Um, I'm if you sure want to talk to me. I'm pretty sure the bone's connected to the <laughs> L bone, yeah. they said. In this, that has something. Yep. Is that right? Yeah. Like, I mean, all you're doing is, <laughs> yep. is reading the words that are going through the track when I'm seeing a patient, right? Like, okay, the knee bone's connected to the yep. thigh bone. So... Um, <laughs> <laughs> connected so to my wristwatch my <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah but, you know all of that sort of stuff for sure um 
Yeah, it, I know that I was young, right? I was young, I was dumb, I was full of myself, and I've been cut down so many times that I just realized that that's just not the best way to do things. The best way to do things is to seek the truth, to go with where the science is taking you, yet keep an open mind to where experiences take you as well. Um, and I think that's the key there. And um, people who don't yep. do that, you know, they find themselves trapped in a lab or they find themselves telling patients things that are just not true. Um, mm, and I yeah. can't tolerate mm. either of those. I, I don't want to be stuck in a lab and I don't want to be telling people things that aren't true. So for me, I've got to stay on then? top of the what science. Do you do somebody... what, what, what do you do yep. if somebody does stump you? Somebody says, Stump I've me. got this pain in my hip. Yeah, if they say, I've got this pain in my hip. When I squat, I get pressure here, so on and so forth. And you can't put your finger on it. Does mm. that ever happen? Like, obviously, oh, yeah, like you say, you don't want to just come up with a... You don't want to come up with a, an answer just for the sake of coming up with an answer. Um, how often does that Absolutely. happen that you really think, oh, they've nearly got me here? Yeah, it. to be honest, it doesn't happen nearly as much as it used to. Um, but then I uh, also have referral that's bias. Sorry? Sorry, I didn't that's, hear that's what you said. That's a good sign. <laughs> oh, that's no, a good sign? Said, uh, yeah, just well, said that's a, it's a good sign. Yeah, I just see it as getting older and being around long enough to have seen things come around again, you know? Um, yeah, but definitely. But absolutely, uh, the first thing I say to them is, look, I'm having trouble. I just want to be up front with you and say that uh, I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble with this, but the thing that I will guarantee you is that the service doesn't stop when the appointment ends, right? Because I'm going to go off mm -hmm. and I'm going to look at this and I'm going to go find out this and I'm going to consult with these people and I'm going to work it out. And if I need to send you somewhere, I'll send you somewhere. Um, you know, I back myself 100%. I've got 100% money back guarantee. If you don't like the session that we had, if you don't like the service you got, I'll give you your money back. Um because, like I said, for me, it's all about the patient. Um, and so, yeah. if I've got to go, if I've got to go find out and consult people from around the world because I'm stumped by this, then I'll do it. I just do what it takes to to work it out. You know, like I said, I used to have an ego. These days, I'm happy for the ego to be put aside. I'm just too old for that stuff. I just want to help people. Yeah, that's good. Hey, you said something before that um I was interested by. You said um the you know, the people that do like you keep coming and seeing you and all that sort of stuff. Do you think that's slightly ironic in the fact that you're trying to never see them again? <laughs> <laughs> I I do, actually. I wouldn't, you yeah. know, I, I set a personal goal of trying to work out what's going on with someone and have them pretty right within three sessions, three to five sessions. Obviously, some conditions sure. are never going to be like that. But, you know, if somebody hurts themselves... I want them to know what's exactly wrong, what the what is the prognosis, so what to expect into the future, and what the treatment plan is, and excuse me, and what they have to do at each step of the way, and I want that nailed down well within three sessions, and have them feeling after the first session, if if it's the type of condition that is amenable to it, I want them feeling at least seventy percent better straight away, um, mm. and you know it's a big challenge. Sometimes you can't do that. Mm. Someone's got a broken leg. Uh, okay, that's not going to happen in the first session. Um, but, well, I you mean, know, maybe it's not going to happen or maybe you're just not good enough yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's when I'm you need the Jedi. You it. need the Jedi Force to kick in. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm joking, man. I'm not expecting you to I, fix broken I, I keep standing over session. them, closing my eyes with my hand extended and they keep looking at me. And I'm, yeah. What are you doing? Like, I'm Is that the, are, they the patients that, are they the patients that don't come back after the first session? <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> Fuck, they that don't return so calls. Weird. I just yeah. didn't get it. They don't return the calls. So. <laughs> hey, um... <laughs> before we before we go to we're, we're going to go to um, the good the bad and the science in one second and then we might move on to some real um, training kind of some more training philosophies. Um, I just wanted to ask, what's been your most rewarding case that you've had in your career so far? Does one stand out in your mind? There's there's quite a few. There's quite a few landmark ones. Um, I've got a recent one, I've got an older one, and I've got an ongoing one. Um, how many would you like me to tell you? 
Just the, the one. Wise, just one. Yeah, just the one would be good. <laughs> All right. Just we are. One. We are uh, um, you, you told us you had to get back to work at two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, just, no it, it just whichever one pops to pops to mind. Just tell us about uh, something that you know, because you're All obviously right. passionate about your job. The one that I'm most proud of is a friend in America. She uh, had. All of this stuff is public, so I'm not telling you anything yep. that she hasn't told people in the world. Um, cool. She had uh, surgery and had her her a couple of bones fused in her pelvis and started developing hip labral pain. Now, she lives overseas in America, right? And yep. I caught up with her I caught up with her last year um, and a friend of mine a friend of mine took her through some CrossFit stuff, showed her she could squat without pain, showed her she could uh, lunge without pain, showed her she could step up without pain. And with my encouragement as well, uh, encouraged her to join a local CrossFit. And then she joined her local CrossFit. Um, and with my guidance and encouragement, and, you know, so after every session, we kind of debrief. Um, mm -hmm. she has gone on to do amazing things. She's fitter than she's ever been. She's got less pain. She's doing things she never thought she'd be able to do. She flares up her pain and is in control of it. Um, today mm -hmm. she did a 110 pound, um, strict press, like a 53 kilo strict press. Um, wow. for a girl That's who's huge. five foot six, right? Like... <laughs> My strict and press, my strict press is um, seventy kilos. <laughs> hey, did you yeah. know that uh, she's man. coming to get you? you know, she's coming to get you. <laughs> and um, you know, she's <laughs> yeah. she's just going great guns. She told me today that the coaches started teaching how to do a keeping bar muscle up. She started physio. She started CrossFit in September, October last year, and. Um, and was not fit to do a lot of things. She has a lot of problems in terms of hypermobility and the surgical stuff. And yeah, she's going great guns. I, I think. So it's just been more for of a, me. A, a that's life one of the. Around. Yeah, it's been a life turnaround, but it's a standout for me because I was able to help her without touching her. Like I can't, right? Like yeah. I can't do anything to her. So whenever she's mm, yep. in pain, it's always been about talking her through the pain, giving her things to do through messages, not even Skype calls or anything, right? Like, it's just on WhatsApp, and it's been amazing. Um, and it's really helped me help people remotely, and it's really mm. helped me realize maybe it, it isn't all about me and about what I do for them physically, in person, like, you know, the manual magic and, oh, you're yep. a wizard with your hands and, oh, you do this, you do that. Like, maybe it's not that. Maybe it's because I can get someone to feel a certain way and help the body heal in a certain way and help people control their pain and change the way that they perform so that they can kick on and develop a more resilient body. And so resilience for me in the body is... Can you do whatever you need to do in a variety of ways? So variation mm. is the king, right? Variability is the king. And yep. um, and I've been able to help her develop resilience. Um, and she's done all the work. And I also want to say equally so, equally, if not more than, than my contribution, has been her coach. Her coach has been fantastic with her. I, you know, I, I've been to over 50 boxes um, around the world, and he is—he's top notch. He's pretty good. Um, he's That's right good. up there with the best. So uh, I've been impressed with how he's dealt with her problems. He's pushed her when she needed to be pushed. Um, he allows her to hold back when when he recognizes she needs to hold back. Um, so you know, I, I don't come across that a lot with CrossFit coaches. Um, I have to train them how to recognize that stuff, and I haven't been able to train him. I'm just For not sure. there. So, um, I think, I think that's, um, that, that's that, something that we'll want to touch on a little bit later after the, um, after the next segment is kind of the, the good and the bad coaching and, and, you know, some of the reasons for injury in, in the CrossFit industry, weightlifting industry and so on and so forth. But, um, I think, I think we'll throw, um, we'll throw to Tommy. Tommy's got some news for us, Anthony. 
and uh, and Sounds then we'll good. get back into some uh, some more treatment, rehab, and prehab stuff. Alrighty. So uh, this segment, uh, my friend, is called the Good, the Bad, the Science. We touch on something uh, good that's happened in the media, something not so good that's happened in the media, and then something uh, sciencey or sciencey, depending on where you are. <laughs> Uh, at the moment Science. in the world. <laughs> yeah. Which nation uh, calls it Skyens, Tommy? R- regional French dialect, I, I, <laughs> okay. I believe, yeah. Um, Skyens. Yeah, that's, yeah, are you from there? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, the good, this is a Star Wars. Um, when you said Star Wars, you then into Star Wars, Anthony, I had to um, jump, on, jump on this one. So, um, Star Wars films have influenced pop culture in a way no other cinematic series has, even earning itself an internet-driven holiday. Star Wars Day, I'm not sure you knew this, is uh, now annually celebrated on the 4th of May, um, or May, May the 4th. May the 4th be with Get it, you. as in May the 4th. Yeah, <laughs> see, under, he got it. Very good, very you good. got it, mate. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. You, you know what May the 4th is. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was actually yesterday, or depending on, you know, if you're from that uh, French um, region, it's probably coming up. <laughs> I've got to stop at that French gag. <laughs> um, now, my question was um, to you, Anthony, what, what is it about Star Wars that, that inspired a generation of massive nerds to, to show their true nerdism? What, what is so good about Star Wars? <laughs> nerdism. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, it's about the fact that a guy in pyjamas with a shaggy haircut came good, you know? Like, didn't look like he had much of a, a personal hygiene thing happening and... Um, <laughs> You know, giving droids. We're talking about Chewbacca here, or yeah, or pedophiles. We're talking about Luke. (laughs) Are we actually? And you know, he he comes good. And it's it's the quintessential hero thing. You know, I I'm bit I, you know, I I think if you're if you're not a feminist, you're a sexist. I I think the whole damsel in distress thing isn't good. But Princess Leia, you know, taking the gun, taking charge, getting things done. Like I I think thirty years ago, that was revolutionary for them. So, um, mm. uh, I think that sort of thing is, is inspirational. I think the, um, the whole against all odds, the whole, uh, you know, you have to look at the cultural context, the, you know, they had an oil mm. crisis, they've got the Soviets. You're definitely, down on them. you're definitely looking at it, looking at it from the totally opposite direction that I look at it from Anthony. I'm like, whoa, lightsabers. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm kind of looking at it from like, geez, Princess Leia's hot as. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Princess Leia's still pretty good yeah. looking to this day. Oh, mate. Han Solo. Oh, day, I'm off Harry Fisher. Han well, Solo's still looking you, pretty good. Yeah. Han Solo's made can a Can I tell you, I'm, I'm going to confess a little bit here, fellas. I'm going to confess. We What's we that? got a little thrill in Return of the Jedi when Princess Leia got shot and Han Solo, I don't know if you remember it, but Han Solo goes yep. down to support her and and hold her up because she was falling down and he copped a feel. And we all went, whoa, did you see what he did? He touched her boob. <laughs> <laughs> Grab <her> boobs again. That's <laughs> uh, for like so, 10 year so olds, you know. <laughs> princess boobs are the best type of boobs, in my opinion. <laughs> they are. <laughs> uh, right, what do you I got, showed... Tommy? What's next? Sorry, uh, we can't. I'd love to talk about Star Wars all day. And we'd love to talk have... about what your favourite sort of boobs are. We've got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got next for us, Tommy? Okay. Um, now, so a man evading police has fallen seven stories from a car park in South Bank, which is a, uh, a um, suburb very close to where we are right now. Um, he was seriously injured in the fall of about 20 metres and was taken to hospital in a critical condition. Security guards at the Power Street apartment building first raised the alarm after the man was spotted acting suspiciously in a car park about 3am. When the uh, police arrived at the scene, the man tried to flee and um, managed to, uh, to fall 20 metres. Now... Uh, Anthony, this is a weird question. This is a very bizarre segue into this one. But um, what do you think this man possibly could have done or had been doing to choose to, to jump out of a building as opposed to give himself up to the police? So it's a quite a bizarre scenario yeah, that, he, that he would like have found himself Like, I know it is in. a bizarre scenario, but it's, it, it really is quite obvious. Um, he was naked at the time, and he was lusting after a particular car. And he was looking at the muffler and the exhaust system of a particular car and was so embarrassed by his sexual deviancy that he felt that he must uh, run away from the situation. It's Is is that not that obvious? Like, I mean, can we say well, that that was uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought he was being for real. I yeah. thought that was the, the new update of the news story. Are, Look, are you taking the piss, Anthony, or are you being real serious now? <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I, okay. I took a Duralax earlier, so it just comes right out of my ass. <laughs> yeah. so. 
<laughs> yeah. You sound like you're about 14 beers in. <laughs> yeah. That's... Um, just, just in case you didn't know, that is a genuinely serious uh, news story. So we, we hope that the man is, is, is doing okay. But, um, I hope he's found, found yeah. the right car for him. Well, it would have been too boring right to say that he was casing the joint or trying to steal a car. Like, I mean, that's everybody does that. <laughs> no, you've done well. You've, you've done well. You've done really well. He's trying to steal a car. He's trying to fuck a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on. Let's move on. What do you got next for us, Tommy? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh, God. That uh, that was good from you, Bill. Yeah. Um, now, the uh, the science, Anthony, or Mr. Lowe. Three yes, Earth-sized planets orbiting a star practically next door might be a good place to hunt for alien life, or at least <clears> check out some worlds that are different from anything in our solar system. The planets yeah. orbit a dim, cool star just 39 light years away in the constellation Aquarius. So, you know, just probably a little bit further than South Australia from where we are. Um, each is <laughs> outside same, or though. possibly on the... Yeah, yeah, about the same, yeah. Uh, each is outside or possibly on the edge of the star's uh, habitatural zone where average temperature, uh, temperatures are just right for liquid water but there could be niche locales on the worlds where alien life might thrive. So my question is, guys, uh, what is the first thing you guys would do or say to to uh, intelligent extraterrestrial life if you were ever in such a situation? What would you do? Bill, do you have a one for this? Oh, Anthony's massive Star Wars, man. I'm going to throw it to Anthony. Anthony, what do you, what's, uh, you, got any, uh, you got anything you'd feel to the, the AT of the, of the future? <laughs> mm. Um, I think, I think it depends on what the context is, to be honest. If it was a little bit aggressive, you know, I felt like there was a battle coming on. I would, I would march onto the deck battle. of their ship and I <laughs> would say, there storm troopers ah, all around me. <laughs> storm troopers all around, I would say something like, ah, oh, Lord Vader, I thought I could smell your presence, you know, like, um, <laughs> that, that might be a good way to open negotiations. Um, you, you would you would otherwise. open with a open with a Star Wars gag, and if you didn't get it, you'd just run. I don't I'm, I, I don't know if he would get it. <laughs> That's just me, but I'm I'm assuming hey, Star Wars uh, is not hey, a. Hey, so it's Dortho, right? <laughs> yeah. right? You know, your brother of you, <laughs> Dortho. I couldn't come up with a, with a name. I don't know why I came is that up an with alien that. word? It's an alien name, mate. Oh, is it? A... Yeah, it's, it's the most common name. It's like Mark. Dortho. It's Dortho. like Muhammad or Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Well, you uh, could say you hello. We yeah. call people like you dorks, and then you could just oh. tell them that that's what you call alien life, dorks. And then you know everybody on yeah, the negotiation yeah. party yeah. is having a bit of a giggle. <laughs> oh, you know, you're such a dork, and all that sort of stuff. It's slightly maybe, offensive. Maybe that though, wouldn't be. Dork, that that, that well, may not. I mean, let's well uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah, <laughs> let's wrap it up. Cool. Right, so you're we, gonna call an alien talk, a dork. We talk lots more bollocks <laughs> if we need, but um, there's plenty of time for that. All righty, Anthony. So. Let's talk about um, some more direct stuff about um, s- treatment and, uh, and, and prehab and rehab stuff for the athletes out there. So a lot of our listeners are in the CrossFit weightlifting, powerlifting, functional fitness realm. Um, so what are the biggest mistakes the general populace say they're a, they're a full-time weightlifter, they're a full-time CrossFitter? So I'm saying four or five days a week. What are the biggest mistakes that people tend to, um, tend to have in not looking after themselves, prehab, rehab. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's a tough question. I, I I'm going to go out on a limb here and say Good. that they believe that there is only one way to do things. Um, mm. I think that's I think that's something that's really important. A lot of the things that I fix in people are because. Either a coach or an athlete are trying to force their body type to do a particular technique um, or try to achieve some sort of standard which is difficult for them to achieve. And rather than trying many different ways to do something, um, for example, the knees over the toes thing, right? It's taught to personal Mm -hmm. trainers before CrossFit came along. The whole don't let your knees pass your toes, uh, vertical shins, uh, whatever you want to call it. You know what? If you There are some people with long enough femurs that you need to let those knees go past the toes. And if you don't, Absolutely. they're going to look yeah, like right. they're doing a good morning when they should be doing an upright yep. 
front squat for Olympic Definitely. lifting. You know, you know the thing. So you know the thing with that is as well though. There's there's uh, CrossFit itself. Uh, some of their specialty courses teach different ways of squatting, like the mobility yeah. course that and the 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 um, the uh, football course. Both teach yep. um, toes directly forwards for yep. for um, for squatting, and then with your knees out to increase the uh, stability of the hip capsule. And so CrossFit itself is it's so broad that it's not even really worth talking about as far as HQ and the level one seminars go. But continue, so uh, uh, continue. <laughs> yep. No, that's a good Very point. Good. That's definitely a good point. Yep. No, no, it's a good point. And I work with the CrossFit football boys. Um, you know the power athlete HQ people and. Um, Yep. And there is a reason why they teach that. And, you know, mm-hmm. I hopefully through my influence, you'll hear them use words like overcooking and uh, tension to task these days because they, they recognize that you can push your knees out too far, right? You can force yes. yeah, definitely. Uh, anatomical differences. Like, you know, I've got a tibial torsion, which just means that my, my, my shin bone is twisted. So... For me, toes forward is actually knees in just because it'll rotate my knee in. It's just not right. So I have to be out a little bit. And that's okay. You know, like Kelly I'm never going to be the Kelly perfect... Starrett copped a little bit of heat from that with his... Um, he, Kelly Starrett copped a bit of heat for that with his supple leopard book yeah. because Diane Fu would squat with her knees... So uh, far toes, out. Toes forward and then knees so far out that it was... Is it vulgus? Is it is knees no. out vul- So varus fault no, is when varus. knees too far out of the tight and then a valgus fault Ver- and knee cave. Varus is, varus is out. Varus well, even, just, yeah, to call it, even is, just to call it a fault but, but, is a problem, you know. That's I even would to totally agree with that. Yeah, just any 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 lack of alignment, I'm assuming, is not good because it it um you know brings the knee out of alignment and it um there's no stacking of the joints, so it's less stable. Um. Yeah. Again, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that well, I don't your, think alignment what are your is thoughts? as important to injury as people think, because I see all sorts of strange okay, shit okay. going on. And people surviving. Cool. Now, I will say that good alignment lends itself to good performance. But we don't have any scientific literature to support the fact that alignment leads to injury. So, for example, if we look at pronation mm. of the foot uh, during running, mm-hmm. there are people that overpronate, whatever that means, and they don't have a higher incidence of leg injuries, or lower limb injuries, back injuries, or anything like that compared to somebody with good foot alignment. So, you know, even just the presence of of a pronation or an overpronation is not a determining factor. Now, it may be a contributing factor and it may lead to poor performance, but not necessarily injury. And you were talking about, you know, people taking care of themselves. So I do, I obviously help people with their injuries, but I also help people with their sports performance. So people can sometimes get confused because I will talk about alignment in sports performance because I think that certain alignment ranges and putting your joints in certain positions are going to give you the best performance. But that doesn't yeah, mean that it's sure. going to protect you from injury, you know? So so if you're talking about injury prevention, there's that. The second thing is that people do things out of habit without thinking. So people will spend half an hour on a roller to get five minutes of squatting in. I think that's stupid. Um, mm, yep. You know, you're not really addressing the real problems. That's number one. Number two, you can't actually soften that ITB. Uh, the ITB doesn't move. Yeah. That's another one for you. Um, and, you know, and why are you so beating up I... muscles that are trying to protect your body, right? Like these muscles are turned yep. on for a reason and you're trying to turn them off by beating them up and then getting mad that you are sore like you just got to deal with the reason why they've turned on in the first place so everybody complains about tight hip flexors and yet they don't understand the intricacies of how the body works and why the hip flexors might be turned on more than usual and then so that's what i do i go in and find out the real reasons why and just teach people how to train differently and to be honest so, it's um... fairly simple um, yeah, yep, look, fairly... that's a really good point. I don't, I don't want to. Um, sorry. Do we just? Hey, did we cut him off there? That's right. I don't think so. We can <laughs> clap in and out of this if that's cool. Um, but uh, uh, Anthony, um, <laughs> you, you mentioned um, some good points there. I don't want to um, harp on too long about this sort of thing. But um, number one about the IT band. So many people when they have like you know really really tight um, quads or tight tight knees or they can't squat properly, they 
absolutely smash the IT band. And I read somewhere that, you know, they've done studies with the IT band and they've taken a dead man's IT band and hung it off a roof with 40 kilos on it and it doesn't stretch. Like, it's just so, it's so tense. Yep. And you actually have to address areas above and below. So the TFA, you know, you've got to look at the what the glute's doing and, and maybe parts of your VMO. But um, um, I had something else to say and now I have completely forgot. Yeah. Um, got to remember a lot of people don't know what the VMO yeah, and so the TFA. Yeah, so the inside of your quad and then the above the above at the top of the hip. Yeah, yep. that's right. Just Do you mean outside. TFL? TFL, sorry, not the TF. Yeah, the TFL. Tensor fascia lata? <laughs> yeah, tensor fascia lata. I think I yep. stuffed that up. The tensor fascia half-strength latte with a bit of soy <laughs> milk, if that's all right. Um, <laughs> but uh, you mentioned... Um, you know, about all that rolling for five minutes of squatting and then they're getting annoyed. It's how, how, how much would you say biomechanics is important more over mobility? Well, you see what is mobility, right? Mobility to me is simply how freely can you move with your available range of motion, your flexibility. So if you get up in the morning and you know that you can fully squat, but it takes you 20 minutes before you can fully squat, I'd say that your mobility is shit. If mm. you can get up in the morning, cop a full squat, after one or two reps, I'd say that your mobility is pretty good. Um, but mobility doesn't equal flexibility to me. Yes. Flexibility is your range of motion and how far it can literally move. So um, if you want to improve flexibility, you've got to put time in. Um, and to be honest, I think great the greatest adaptation comes from just training properly and being patient, not pushing the results, pushing the weights. I see much greater improvement with that than I do with people that try to stretch the shit out of their muscles or or do whatever. That's number one. Number two, the biomechanics of things. Like some some people like myself are just not built to do certain things. It's just not going to happen. Um, and it's hard to accept. But, you know, like, I mean, if if we were awesome... If we were all awesome, we would all be able to make it to the CrossFit Games. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that not all of us are as good as other people. And we've all got our own limitations. So you just want to work with what you have. And I've got a twist in my leg. I can't change that twist. Um, you know, I've got a certain type of muscle type. I can probably go all day and I suck mm -hmm. at sprinting. So I'm going to train the sprinting as best I can. And I believe I can change it. It's just that I've got to be realistic about the fact that I'm not going to be the fastest kid on the block, you know. Um, i just got to do what mm. the best that I can with what I have. So with the, sure. with the rolling, with the rolling, rolling is a trick to your brain to distract you, to give you a window of opportunity to change. And if, if you feel better with rolling, if it feels good, I want you to keep doing it. I just don't want you to believe the bullshit about stretching things and changing, changing the um, the scar tissue and all that other so stuff. So what's like, the optimal? Seriously. What, what's the optimal for people? Because obviously there's there's those people that will come into a gym and they'll mobilise for an hour and roll around for for forty minutes. What's the optimal procedure if you've got someone who's coming in general populace? They're walking in, they want to train, they want to get their body limbo ready to go. How much time on the roller? How much time? Uh, zero, on roller, zero on the zero roller. Zero on the roller. Zero doing anything. If you want to squat, if you're going to start with squatting, I suggest you start squatting. Um, and you know, it could be as simple as, as sitting down to a bench and standing up, just greasing greasing the wheels and getting so things just dynamic moving. Dynamic movement. Yep. Dynamic movement is always the best prep. If you're going to do explosive cool. stuff, you've got to you've got to start with dynamic movement and work into some plyometric type prep stuff. Mm. Um, mm. If you're like my goal, my my goal uh, has been, and I was able to do it until I had some issues with my gout, which is completely unrelated to training. Um, mm -hmm. Is to be able to put a hundred kilos on the bar and go in and squat it for five right off the bat cold um okay. well, on my seminars on my seminars just recently i did a tour of the usa and canada i picked up uh in perth i picked up 150 kilos in a deadlift for 10 <clears throat> cold i'd been teaching all day i picked it up cold um in america i did 160 for a double and 180 for a double cold 
Um, what's the reasoning behind it? So go into that a little more. What, what's the reasoning behind yeah, that proving, sounds really interesting. proving that to yourself? Yeah, because mentally, if we limit ourselves with this idea that we cannot perform unless we've done a warm-up, what happens when a car crash happens across the road and you've got to go now move this 400 kilo? You know, just say the weight is about 400 kilos. Well, you've got to get the roller out, mate. Like it's obvious. <laughs> I mean, you've got to stretch your glutes. It's obvious. To warm you'll, you'll, grab first, the blue, right? you'll grab the blue band, find your nearest, uh, your nearest stop Pole. sign, start to, start to work that shoulder capsule. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Take a bit of pre-workout. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, go on. So, you've so got to get the pre-workout. You just want to be able to apply your strength straight away into a, in a general situation in, in everyday life. Yes. Now, note that I'm doing this with set lifts. They're not unpredictable situations. I still believe in a dynamic warm-up. I still believe you're going to get the best performance out of doing a well-organized warm-up. Okay, so I'm not saying to ditch yep. your warm-up. What I am saying is to challenge your belief that you need to do a warm-up if you're going to do a task, like pick something up once or twice. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, that's good like to hear because I'm a weightlifter and I hate <laughs> mobilizing. Are you? <laughs> I get shit about that, Anthony, every day because every podcast I mention that I'm a weightlifter. But I walk into the gym and I'll do... Uh, if I'm starting with snatches, I'll, uh, I'll put the bar on my back. I'll do some side bends with a 20 kilo bar. I'll do some torso twists. This is just to kind of warm up my lower back a little bit and get my body moving because I've had some issues in that area. And then I'll start to use the bar as a, as a um, empty bar and I'll just start to do power snatches, muscle snatches, so on and so forth. I don't really get in and open up the hip capsule mm. and, and I roll Good. my wrists around and stuff because my wrists get a little sore but I don't I like to just start to move in the way that I will move the bar once I start to put weight on it and then I'll, I'll actually start to train and I get a lot of heat sometimes because I've had back injuries about the way that I warm up and, and sure I mean in, in the past I used to just get a 60 kilo I put two 20 kilo this is what I used to do when I was a, um, really early on I'd get two 20 kilo plates put them on a the bar come up, unrack it, sit down the bottom of a squat, sit over one hip capsule, sit over the other hip capsule, do that for a minute, do that twice, and then I'd go train. So I'm What's glad... What's wrong with that? It kind of... Well, the, the, the thing that was wrong with that, I thought was the fact that I had all these problems with my back. I had two bulging discs and a torn disc in my back. So I started no. going through all these elaborate um, warm-up protocols and doing... It, no. it would take me... Because a weightlifting session is going to take me four hours, basically. It takes me two and a half hours of training, uh, and, and I'm half an hour away from the club. So probably you know three and a half hours is my is my training. And I was mobilising and warming up and doing all, all this bullshit for forty five minutes before I really put any weight on the bar. And it's just how much time tired by the do end you of have that? in a day is one thing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. So it's an interesting uh, for me. This is the this is the minorities view because I'm always told I need to warm up more and so forth but no just what no why, yeah no, 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 explain no. explain if, explain if I were you I okay number one all this advice is general do not take it without going to check with somebody okay so disclaimer is yeah. it discs everybody has disc issues okay Loaded flexion, like if you've got a technique problem, that's a coaching problem. Um, I do video reviews. I ask people to throw up their videos on my page. I'll review them for free. Um, yep. You know, I I do that sort of stuff. If you've got something like that, we can look at it. But the bottom line is, is that if you get back pain, your body has associated a movement or it's got some sort of signal to say that it doesn't like the danger that you're putting yourself in. So if you can find the things, if you know, if you say, look, if I do a set of, if I do a set of five at, I don't know, 75%, I know, and I, if I go to the bottom and it's at the end of the session, I know that I'm going to be, I'm going to be RS tomorrow morning for a few hours, then I would suggest to you that you need to do exactly that with a little bit less weight and we've got to figure out what it is until you can associate that movement and that weight without pain and so so you're saying it's very much a mental thing no not mental as in um oh. psychological i'm saying mental as in neurological as in the brain is a body part too yes and what your brain does yep. is that 
your brain remembers how many times do you need a spider to fall in front of your face before every leaf that flies at your face in the country becomes a spider do you know what i mean um because ev- every time you're in the context of a car your brain remembers that a spider fell in front of your face have you ever had a spider fall in front of your face like a huntsman or something people have had accidents yeah, I've had because that of in my car yeah. Right? Oh, not not while I was driving, but yeah, I've had that happen before. And then yeah, you're always kind of on edge for mm. the next couple of days, or in my case, exactly, 10 seconds because right? I'm tough as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but your brain remembers how many times do you need to get scared at something? Like, just say you got beat up, or just say you got into a fight somewhere. Um, and you know, just say you got into a fight outside a bar near an alley or whatever, and you're just walking past. And you still look over your shoulder because you think that something might happen to you. Because your brain remembers these things. Mm. So, with your back yep. pain, your brain is remembering them because it's trying to prevent whatever it considered an injury before from happening to you again. Now, if if yep. things are good, if your technique is sound, the weight is not overstressing your tissues, if everything is theoretically good, then you've got to retrain the brain to say that this is okay and the only way to do that is to establish trust and that is to do the thing without pain to pay attention and say okay i'm not going to force you to be scared for me i'm going to do things a little bit differently for you so that it starts to relax and that's why people feel a little bit of tension a little bit of tightness a little bit of pain when they first start something but by the end of the session, because they kept doing it and they felt better and better and better, they were able to keep going. That's why you feel better at the end. It's not because things loosened up, mm. you know? It's because your nervous system has dialed down right. wow. and decreased the tension. So, and this is that, the thing that I yeah. fight against all the time because I get people telling me that their muscles are too tight or, you know, I can't switch my glutes on. And it's like, well... Have you ever thought about the fact that maybe your body thinks that switching your glutes on is actually the wrong thing to do in that situation? Let's have a look at your technique. Mm. And then you just teach them something different because if the threat of popping your hip out is real to the brain, subconsciously, unconsciously, well, then it won't generate a torque that will further put that pressure on. So what I do is I mess with people's brains and I, I mess with people's techniques so that we can teach them how to do things differently, and it works. It's good. Do you know what, mate? It's where all that, that education. That's so interesting. Went. I um, it made me it made me think of something. I read um somewhere in a book. I'm just reading a book about um, um sort of mindfulness um in regard to sport performance, and um, yep. they were talking about this example of a kid that um, um was perceived to have been allergic to Vegemite his whole life, and um, right. you know they couldn't they. They, they did tests on him and all this sort of stuff, and they they never actually um, proved that he was allergic to Vegemite. And he um, let me guess, kid just didn't like Vegemite. Well, the thing is, <laughs> the thing is, yeah, he just didn't like Vegemite. Um, the thing actually was when he was a, when he was a young kid, and he remembers it now. Um, was just an example in the book. Um, at, he was eating a Vegemite sandwich, and um, he was actually stung by a bee at the time, and his unconscious right. brain associated the bee sting or the pain or the injury go. with the Vegemite. And then took that as an allergy to Vegemite. And every time he would go near Vegemite, he would get like a, a yucky taste in his mouth. Um, yep. And then he actually, you know, sort of worked off that and never had an issue with it again. It's, um, it's just amazing how powerful the brain is and how it tries to connect the dots when it can't explain things. Um, Absolutely. You say that have a you, lot of have people, you seen? Yeah. Have you seen all of those athletes that have stupid routines that, you know, Serena Williams doesn't change her socks during a tournament because mm. she didn't do oh, it yeah. one tournament for whatever reason and she won the tournament. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, people develop yep. these habits and superstitions for a reason and that's because... Superstitions, yeah. These high-level athletes, like, I, I bet you weightlifters have them too. These high-level athletes are trying to be in control of so many things in their life that it is easier that's not right. to change your socks and not have to think about that. Then to go, I've got a brand new pair of socks on. I wonder if that's going to make a difference. Do you know what I mean? Like you've yeah. got to quiet and, and, all you know, the voices in your head. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, that's a great point. The best weightlifter in the world or arguably of all time, apart from a man named Pierce Demas, Ilya Ilian just goes up straight to the bar, sets his back and then hits it straight away. He doesn't have a routine or anything. 
and he's renowned for it because he clearly doesn't let his mind well, in the way. Routine. There's no need for routine. Well, well, that yeah, is well, his yeah, routine, though. That. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. Not not having that issue. Yeah, I like the yeah. um, arguably the greatest weightlifter of, of all time. <laughs> yeah, oh, apart from this guy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> you know what arguably means, right? Uh, does arguably mean um. The best, but one more is also the best. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, yeah, that's good. That, that's um, that's interesting stuff. I actually very, very rarely, because I've been uninjured, uh, injury free for a while. I'll very, very rarely, if I'm feeling a little jacked up in the lower back or something, I'll go and I'll address the bar. I'll stand underneath, put my toes under the bar, about to do a lift, and I'll think of my back. And I deliberately, without reading any studies or anything, I've just been spending a little bit more time on mindfulness and meditation and stuff the last kind of six months. I've started to delve into that. And just subconsciously, I know that that can't be a good thing, that that's going to put me at more, inju- at more risk of injury. So if I stand up and my back feels a little tweaky, and I'm, but I know that I'm about to do a lift, I think to myself, fuck that off, shut that out straight away, mm-hmm. and then I go, I grip the bar, and I think positive thoughts, finish at the top, fucking whatever I'm, whatever I'm working on for that particular lift. But um, that's interesting. So um, just, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up sh- uh, shortly, Anthony. We'll throw to a few questions before we, um, I think uh, we'll th- throw to a few questions before we finish up. But before we, uh, before we do... Just wanted to ask. Um, so, just for the, um, just for the um, the people out there that are starting CrossFit or, or starting weightlifting, starting powerlifting, starting to really use their body and put it under lots of stress. Yeah. So, just before we um, before we move on and get to our uh, nine from nine, or in this case, six from six, because Max unavailable today. Um, mm. I just wanted to ask. So, people going out there that are starting in CrossFit or weightlifting or um, any sort of strength training, really putting their body under immense amounts of stress. What's the right mixture of, in your opinion, so we've heard your thoughts on pre, uh, pre warming up, basically, we've heard your thoughts. What about how much time should people be putting in to do extracurricular activities such as getting a rub, seeing a physio, doing a float, uh, going and doing a float, having a walk in the water in the ocean? What are the, what really should people be doing to try and get their body through week to week and what are some of the best practices that you recommend? All right. I'm, again, going to go out on a limb. You're not going to get typical responses from me. Um, number one, That's good. you've got That's to do like. cheap things, right? You've got to do cheap things because I'm going to piss a lot of people off, including physios, but a lot of us are unnecessarily consulted um, and will yep. tie you into coming mm. to see us too often, too often. I see mm. it all the time, Shasters. right? I just had yeah. somebody yeah. for three months was seeing somebody, got no difference whatsoever, and one session with me, you know, and he's doing stuff that he didn't think he could do. Um, so, super important to do cheap things. So, if you like walking in the water, go walk in the water. If you like having a sauna or Just a spa, go have a spa. If you like mm-hmm. having a rub, go get a massage. Just don't think that it's absolutely necessary. The reason why is that rest and recovery is best done when you feel good. If you feel like you're in pain when you're doing your stretches and when you're doing your exercises, guess what you're training your brain, right? You're training your brain to be in pain Mm. when you do them. Who looks forward to doing painful things? I love it. Right? Right? So do the things that feel good. People say to me, "But, (laughs) but I love the roller. And I say, well, then keep doing the roller. Just don't think that it's absolutely essential unless it's essential to you feeling good. So if your happiness Mm. is tied into the fact whether you've done the roller or not, well, then I don't want to mess with your happiness. I might say that you're a little bit, I don't know, screwed up if your happiness is determined on the roller. But um, yeah, you know what I mean? So that's that's number one. Um, Number two is that the best thing you can do is tidy up your technique, the old mechanics consistency <clears throat> intensity. If you tidy your technique up before progressing your weight, you will do so much more. My friend in America, Christy, has focused on technique over weight, and now is the time that she's putting weight on the bar, right? And so it's you know six months or more later down the track, And she's making gains. Every time she puts weight on the bar now, she's making gains because we took the time to make sure that her technique was sound because she's got all these things that she has to take care of, right? So Mm -hmm. technique um, is way more important. 
strict strength stuff. I love the fact that regionals this year has got strict muscle ups in it because people don't spend enough time mm-hmm. doing strict stuff, right? Do the strict yep. stuff, get it yep. right. I like it. You know, that's why Olympic weightlifters do front squat because front squat is really strict, right? And a clean is very yep. dynamic. Things can go wrong. You know, little minute movements make things a little bit variable. Doing something like a front squat is a lot more strict, a lot more, um, uh, a lot more controllable, so that you can you can really work on the things that you need to work on. It's a little bit more. It's uh, brain crawling space before you, you can know, walk, basically, as well. Exactly. Or, or exactly. Run in that matter, you know, before you add the dynamic element to um to whatever you're doing. Yeah, well, that's a Definitely. that's a great question. Um, I think um what we might do, Ant, we uh Ant, we might um. We might send it over to. Um, we we normally have to finish off. We normally have um, nine from nine, but Mac, our uh, our third member, is uh, he's really sick. He's unwell, so isn't he? Shout out to Mac. So good. Yep, shout out to Mac. No. Hope you get better, uh, Mac. Nah. <laughs> there you go, Mac. Yeah. Maybe it's all in his mind. Maybe he just ate a bloody Vegemite sandwich <laughs> and he's uh, being a little bit of a pussy. Yeah. <laughs> pussy for sure. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but, um so. It's going to be six from six today, so Mac normally starts us off. So, um, fuck you, Mac, letting us down. <laughs> I'll, then it goes to me. So, my questions and are travel related. Um, the first Very question good. I have for you is um, your favorite travel destination you've been to in the world. It can be a small town, can be a country, can be a, a city, can be anything. Right. I, I basically like traveling most places, but my most recent trip, we drove from Canmore to Jasper on Road 93 in Canada or Alberta Ooh. in the Rocky Mountains. That would and have been that, nice. I, I kid you not, it was like driving in a postcard the whole time. Um, wow. Amazing. 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 Beautiful you get to Lake place. Louise. Lake Louise in that area? Yeah, I had my para-athlete shirt on. I was in shorts and a t-shirt. Everybody was rugged up. I'll, um, I'll put that up on Facebook at some stage. But um, yeah, like, it was funny because I'm walking through in shorts and a t-shirt going, it's t-shirt weather, people, and everybody's just looking at me like I'm nuts. It was good. Yeah. Sure. Lake Louise is the number one place I want to get to in the whole entire world. Um, it's really? It was so frozen pretty, over when I, I got there. I'll, I'll get there one day. Yeah, my friend put a photo up a couple of years ago and it was probably about six years ago now when he was living in Canada and it was when it was the, it was, it was summer. So all you could see was just the reflection of the mountains oh. on the water the, the pine trees going up each side. It was he took the photo, put it on his as his profile picture, and then I, I messaged him straight away and said, "Where on earth are you right now?" And and yeah. since then, it's been the number one place <laughs> I want to get to. So my next question, Ant, is um, your dream destination. Same thing can be anywhere in particular. Um, you name it. Where we where do you want to go? Where do you want to get to? Uh, Europe. I, I've only been to Greece once when I was a little kid. Um, yep. I would love to get to Europe at some stage and, and see things like, and old things too, like Prague, stuff that's a little bit mm-hmm. less touristy, a little bit more untouched, a little bit more authentic. But um, yeah, you know, as I get older, I realize more and more that um, that I'm probably more European than I am Australian, American. Although I, I do love America. I would live in America if I could. Cool. Beautiful. And um, last one from me. Uh, if you were on a desert island and you had three creature comforts to keep you sane, you've got obviously things to keep you alive. If What's going to keep you sane? Um, what are your three choices? Surely it's a mobile phone with internet. Am I allowed to have that? Uh <laughs> Yeah, or not? You can. Well, we don't no? like that get here. Get off Facebook, Radio. Man. Get off social yeah. media. Yeah, most. Be- get off get social off media. All right. <laughs> somebody, somebody, right. somebody once requested a phone and a charger for the phone, <laughs> and then a pair of so, socks. So that was two, two gone already. <laughs> most people throw a ball in though. Yeah. Be active, but um, no. So yeah. you've got your phone though. You've got your phone and your internet. That is one. That is one. We'll take that. Okay. Two more. All right. All right. Um, for sure. Uh, books. Um. Yeah. You know. I think reading, writing, stuff like that. Um, and lastly, you know, something like a deck of cards. Something that you Perfect. can do many things with, if you know what I mean. So, Perfect. I think a deck of cards, you can do lots. One one of the stories that I, I read about Nanzac was that um, 
you know, I'm a Christian, he's a Christian, and he he took a deck of cards and every card related to a verse or or something from the Bible that he memorized and that got him through the trench warfare, you know? Um, so mm, I thought that, that was pretty cool. Beautiful. Yeah, cards and is you can great. You can games. do, um, I mean, you can, you can yeah, that's right. I mean, you can play it. games. You, you can, can, uh, you count. can kick, them, kick them around with you your mates. Yeah, you can, you can um, uh, you know, use it. them to like, you can use them as weapons. If anybody, them, <laughs> if anybody, if anybody tries to come and get you, you can flick them at people and cut them. And, yeah, you, know, you, can, like, you can defend yourself. Because obviously on a desert island, there's tons of people around. Tons of people, right? You can eat the cards. You can, you can make yeah, it fire could be a bit Lord of the Flies ish. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but look great, answer. <laughs> Tommy. Okay. Um, so, uh, Anthony, biggest role model growing up? Did you have one? Um, I would say no. I, like, I don't really remember um, looking Do you up have one now? to anyone in particular. Do I have one now? Okay. Uh, I don't think so. I, I, I think I, I would say my father then. You know, like, cool. I, I think my father's very, very generous. He's He does some really silly things and, you know, like, my brother and sister get mad at me because I get mad at him for stuff like that. But ultimately, he's a really generous man and he'll do anything for anyone and um, and that's what I want to be like. Excellent. Yep. Now, that's a... It's a it's an easy one, but it's, a, it's an effective one, definitely. Um, best thing to do when you've got some downtime... Uh, read and study more. <laughs> cool. Okay. That's what so, I love uh, doing. Man. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, right. That's what okay, I love cool. doing. That's awesome. What's, um, what boring. sort of stuff do you read? Um, look, I'll read papers. I'll read, um, I'll read science reports. I'll read fiction. I like reading science fiction. I'll, I love reading. Uh, I think reading is definitely... One of the best things that you can do in your life. I'll read self-help books because I need a lot of help, you know, being screwed up and all. So, um, so yeah. What's your favorite? What's I, your favorite book? Give us, give us, give us, uh, give us something to work with here. Mm. All right, To Kill a Mockingbird is my all-time favorite. Um, ah, but, so good. So can many you do a, uh, Can you do a Boo Radley impersonation? <laughs> I can't do a Boo. <laughs> I can't do a Boo I Radley. Guess, I guess you can. Tommy. He doesn't really talk. Look, I can does do he? a. Uh, <laughs> No, yeah, it's that's kind true. of ineffective yeah, well, on radio. <laughs> I can't my slide my Boo green Radley hands is on the wall, you know. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. I think, I think the reason Tommy asked you uh, asked you that, Ant, was so that he could do his <laughs> Boo Radley impersonation. So, so you have to <laughs> go on, mate. Well, right. it does say um, it does say that he has a shriekish sort of sound and heavy breathing. So on the radio, it might sound a little bit sus, but it'd be like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's not you bad. Know, after he fights off so, Cunningham. Are we so. talking to Boo here or Anthony Lowe? <laughs> what do you got, Tommy? Um, hey, just on that, do you have a do you have a Star Wars impersonation? I do not. I do not have a Star Wars impersonation <laughs> at all. Oh, that's a because shame. Do, do no, shouldn't it have been, Do I not do her? Yeah. <laughs> Fight them, we must. Do I you are. That's good. My Is that um? Father. That's good. That's I really like that. Is that Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> that is not Samuel L. Jackson. His name is James Earl Jones. Ah, good. I am your also father. known as the owner of the Beast from the Sandlot Kids. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he was the drummer from the Beatles as well, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, final one. Um, good question. I'm really interested to see what you uh, have to say here. If there were three people dead or alive you could invite to dinner, who would they be and why? And it can't be. James Earl Jones or Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> well, okay, that's fair enough. I would love to see Jesus Christ in person. I think that'd be awesome. Let's just put aside a whole bunch of things. Let's get some let's get some real talk going. Give us a few demonstrations, water into wine and stuff like that. That'd be awesome. But just cool. you know, <laughs> I like love it. to talk to him about that sort of stuff. That'll be awesome. Um Apart from Jesus Christ, two other dinner guests. I'm thinking people like... The devil? Um, <laughs> the devil. That'd be interesting. I don't know. Like, if you, if you like awkwardness, maybe. Uh, I'm not into the awkwardness thing. Sort of juke it out. Like so, who likes me life? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, sorry. What's yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I, I think I think some of the some of the jazz musicians of the, of the times gone past... 
That'll be pretty good. You know what? Somebody like Martin Luther King. That would be awesome. Yep. With Jesus Christ. And let's get a let's get a decent feminist on there too. Not somebody crazy like Jermaine Gear Greer, but you know, somebody like um oh, what's her name? Uh Hermione from Harry Potter. <laughs> she's a United <laughs> Nations. Oh, she's hot. <laughs> All right, she's so, the United Nations, so let's just picture um, this. Let's picture Anthony sitting to a nice roast dinner with Hermione Granger, Martin Luther King, and Jesus Christ. <laughs> that's a that's a good yeah. that's a good four. That was a solid. <laughs> the devil standing outside. Solid. He was invited, but you're not letting him in. <laughs> solid answer. I like it. Good stuff. Hey, um, and we're gonna wrap it up. Where, um, where? Firstly, um, is there anything you'd like to plug? Sure, Ooh. sure. Yeah. I've got. Um, I've got an online course that I've just released. It's on mypteducation.com. It's, um, it's to do with the pelvic floor and my passion, uh, especially in the last few years has been bridging the gap between women's health, uh, physiotherapy, uh, women's health problems and, and things like heavy lifting, uh, dynamic exercise like CrossFit. So that's what the course is about. I think far too yep. many people don't know about the problems of incontinence, pelvic organ prolapse, and pelvic pain. And given that, um, you know, one in two women will have pelvic organ prolapse or has pelvic organ prolapse, um, one in two women will and exercise while leaking. Yes, is, le- Massive, is leaking. Massive, right? To, um, Massive. And yep, one in three yep. women will have chronic pelvic pain at some stage of their life. And that's basically... Uh, pain in in their pelvic region at all, so touching inside during sex, insertion of tampon, anything. So it affects tons and tons of women, and people don't talk about it. They don't know how to deal with it in the CrossFit and um, and functional fitness world. So um, so that's my mission, and that's that's what the course has started. Um, so that's mypteducation.com. Yep. My blog is at physiodetective.com. My social media is physiodetective. And I run a consultancy at the Sports Medicine Institute and in Cogra Bay in Sydney. So we've got full gym setups um, so I can actually look at people doing whatever exercise it is. I can pretty much do it at, at both locations. So um, I'm, okay. I'm really big into seeing, the, seeing what the problem is. Beautiful. So uh, I think you covered on that uh, on my next question just in that section there but I was going to ask anywhere people can find you um, so again just to plug your social medias if they can contact you via email um, anything like that Any, anything for the listeners yep so physio de- if you just google physio detective on any social media you'll find me so that's twitter that's uh, facebook that's instagram I'm physio detective um, my email is anthony low uh, sorry it's anthony at physio detective.com and uh, my website, physiodetective.com, is the easiest way to contact me. Okay. Beautiful. Cool. Well, thanks uh, Thanks so much for coming on the show, Anthony. And, uh, May the no force problems. be with you. It's a you. pleasure. Thank yeah. you for inviting me. Beautiful. All righty. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for listening, guys. That was our podcast with Anthony Lowe, the physio detective. Hope you all got a little bit of great information in there. There was heaps of little nuggets of... Uh, of of gold there so if you like the show please go and subscribe on itunes and leave us a five star review if you don't think it's worth five stars do not review us um but seriously though um if you want more information from this podcast go to the show notes which will be at www.adventurefittravel.com forward slash podcast every show there has a show notes page which will have links to anything that we've discussed any programs we've talked about um any people that we've talked about they'll be in the show So check that out and join our mailing list on the website. There's all different forms that you can join. That way you'll never miss out on uh, our podcast releases, our blogs from our bloggers. You'll never uh, miss out on anything coming up from our trips and you'll also get our exclusive discounts and promotions for our uh, our, our followers. So before we finish, I'd like to thank uh, Audible. If you want to try out Audible for free for 30 days, check out www.audibletrial.com forward slash ADVF radio. Get your knowledge on, guys. Get your books in your ears. Also, Locksam Solutions, www.locksamsolutions.com.au. Thank you, Locksam. And NDO Sups, www.ndosups.com. Use ADVF Radio at checkout for 10% off. That's it from us. Oh, and check out AdventureFit, uh, www.adventurefittravel.com to check out our new Philippines trip with Dimitri Klokov. That's it from us, guys. See you next time. 
Discovery Roger, go for deploy. 